you guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Loki Kia in sunny, well, sort of sunny Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have that one midsize sedan that really brought some big changes just a few short years ago. It's this car right here. This is a 2024 Kia K5. This particular one is a GT line. But before we get into this midsize sedan in a color that's probably one of my favorite, it's called Wolf Gray. Let's talk about what's going on here. Midsize sedans, they're still there. They're just not as big of a seller as a lot of SUVs. I mean, that's just the way that the auto industry is, and it has been for quite some time. Now, what's fascinating is that this car, even though it was all new just a couple short years ago, it actually replaced a outgoing midsize sedan known as the Kia Optima. So they went from Kia Optima to Kia K5, and this GT line is one of the sporty trims. Now, of course, you can get your midsize sedan a couple different ways, Camry, Accord, Sonata. But what I wanna find out is, if you're looking at a Camry, should you really, in essence, be looking at a Kia K5, especially the GT line? Let's go ahead, let's dive into our Wolf Gray, and it's got red interior. I love that color combo of a K5 and find out. Right off the bat, the styling. Still looking fresh. Like I said, when they came out with the K5, this was something that was all new. You'll notice that very unique signature turn signal and daytime running lamp looking really sharp. Full triple LED beam headlights. And down below, you do have LED fog lamps in this horizontal slot area. I'm glad that they used that area for some fog lamps because obviously we would have zonked it if it was just plain bare nothing so nice to have the fog lamps look at how low they bring out that front fascia very sharp angle and then coming across the front grill you could clearly see the pure definition of the tiger nose grill squeezed on the interior flared out on both sides flat gray finish not a flat black flat gray and then working our way down you do have functional grill on the lower portion flat black and a little bit of gloss black that flows from one side to the other. Now, as we rise up, I like the way the hood kind of just waterfalls down into that Tiger Nose grill. You got the Kia badge all updated. And then coming around the bend, when you go GT line, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. You have these 18 inch wheels, gloss black, machine aluminum, got a nice style to it. Instead of just a simple five star, five spoke wheel, it, it has a nice, little ornamental element of design there. Tires are 235 on the width, 45 series sidewall, and this is front wheel drive, just like the Camry is. Now, coming down the side of the vehicle, very clean. You do have gloss black on your mirror caps, your turn signals, slim and trim. We have bright, shiny metal work only on the top, and you do get color matched door handles, which are nice. Working towards our rear, it's interesting because it makes you think that this is going to slope back like a Stinger GT and have that sport back, it's not. It actually fools you. So this slopes back, but then you have an actual trunk. I do like the way they took the trim and curved it underneath in a nice U shape. Great job on the taillights. Signature taillights, LED. I like the way you got a gloss black, prominent trunk lid spoiler. And like I said, this is an actual trunk, not a sport back like the Stinger. This one being a GT line, you got a nice clean badge. And then working our way down on the K5, the one zonk I have is the fake exhaust. Those have gotta go. So Steven, show them those fake exhausts. I guess they look good from about 100 yards away, but when you get close and you see they're fake, you're just like, what the heck? And then I love the gunmetal flat gray diffuser in the center, but why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our K5. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts underneath the hood is gonna be, like it says, that turbocharged engine. I like the way it doesn't have a massive engine cover, just enough to cover up some of the inner bits that you really don't wanna look at. And what are we looking at, though, when it comes to power? You have a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four, putting out 180 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed automatic, no CVT, zero to 60 in about 6.8 seconds. Top speed, 128 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs 3,233 pounds, and the vehicle MPGs 27 in the city, 
37 on the highway. So nice to see no CVT because that's the thing you're gonna get when you go four cylinder in a Camry, you're gonna get CVT. No CVT with this particular setup. But while we go ahead, let's fire it up and hear it go off. Right, guys we are inside this 2024 kia k5 gt line i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've been looking at camrys i've been looking at accords i can't even stand the way the new accord looks i was actually going to buy a mazda 6 but they got rid of that i'm kind of digging this uh, gt line especially the gray with the red interior how much is it msrp for the way that this one is optioned is right at twenty nine thousand dollars let's see what you get for the money to the door panels I love the way they did the trim. Soft touch material up top. Then you have that gray, set and gray finish that's gonna hide fingerprints, but yet it still looks tasteful. And then look at what we have down below. A nice bright red armrest to bring in some two-tone. Door pockets on the tighter side. Maybe one candy apple from the State Fair. And you could probably get a fried Oreo in there as well. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing, this satin gray finish hides the fingerprints. You got some simulated stitching, and then you slide on into a ginormous infotainment system. 10.25, easy to use, all touchscreen capability. You got all the usual Kia apps, easy to work through. We throw it in the reverse. There's your backup camera. I wish it would take up all 10 inches. It's more like a six inch, seven inch, uh, backup camera, but you do have trajectory, which is really nice. And then I throw it right back in the park. Working our way down, you have dual climate control, which is great. USB A's, two of them, and a 12 volt. A place for eight Twinkies. You do have your F14 Tomcat. You want to be like Maverick from Top Gun, the original Top Gun, not Top Gun 2. Original is always the best. Can't can't replicate the original. This is going to control your F14 Tomcat and this Kia K5's 8-speed automatic transmission. Two cup holders. You got your Kia K, uh, Key Fob, remote start. It's tasteful looking. Then you got your different drive modes. I'll show you that on the business end. Three stages of heated seats. No ventilated seats at this price point. You do have wireless phone charging, which is great. More of that nice red finish. Lift it up. What are you going to be able to put in there? I would say easily... 28 packages of FLIR 1985 FLIR baseball cards. Just a little fun fact, I used to be a huge baseball fan when I was a kid growing up, and I actually won the 1988 FLIR competition and got the whole set of 1988 FLIR baseball cards without the gum, because we all know the gum just disintegrates as soon as you touch it. But you can keep your packages, unopened packages, of FLIR baseball cards in there. And then the seats, nice soft material. I like the GT line stamped in there. A Little bit of black trim, nice piping. You do have, of course, manual adjustment for the back and for the bottom. And then there's no sunroof in this particular trim, but you do have a nice amount of room in here. Why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Kia K5. All right guys, business time behind the wheel of this Kia K5, you do have power seats for the driver, which is nice, especially that lower lumbar, feels good. Steering wheel, nice leather, flat bottom with the GT line badge, the new Kia badge, and flat black on all the switch gear. You do have, of course, the different modes and everything that you can switch through. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have a little bit of a combo deal. You have a black and white five inch gauge, and then the backlit LED analog gauges, and there's where you could go through your different drive modes. Four different modes. We're gonna keep it in sport. Nice that you don't have to look at the knob when you're changing the modes. But while we go ahead, let's get into the back seat and see if your passengers are gonna be happy that you went Kia over camera. Hi guys, back seat time. And I'm telling you, this K5, it's, it's crazy how much room they have back here. My head is not even close to the headliner. Very comfortable seats. And I just love this red interior. Let me know how you feel about the red interior 
with the wolf gray exterior paint job. On the backs of the seats, you do have a little bit of plastic, but that's gonna be good for when your kids pick their nose and wipe their boogers here. It'll be easy to wipe off. You do have a nice solid pocket where you could put a couple comic books, maybe a, a Mad Magazine. I remember the days when my mom used to get mad every time I would buy a Mad Magazine when we would go to the grocery store because she thought it was really bad stuff in there. God only knows what kids are looking at today on the internet. Um, but you could keep a couple Mad Magazines back there. Command center, not much of a command center, no AC vents, but you do have two USB-A's, which is a nice touch. I am gonna zonk that there's no AC vents, especially when there's perfectly good room for AC vents. But it feels comfy back here. Pull this bad boy down. Mm, it's got a little bit of cush to it. Two cup holders, flip it back. Let's get into that trunk because I wanna go for a drive in this K5. All right guys, time to get into the trunk. This is not a lift back or a sport back. So you're gonna hit the button, hidden perfectly in that trim, and then you're gonna be greeted to 16 cubic feet of space, a ton of room, nice low cargo floor. The rear seats are gonna do that 60-40 split, and you got the handles to release them that are mounted perfectly. I'm gonna lift up the cargo floor liner. You do get a spare, very nice touch. It's funny how all vehicles used to have spares. Now it's like we gotta be super happy when we see one. But why don't we go ahead, close in the trunk, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle and see how this GT Line K5 drives. All right, guys, we are in this Kia K5 GT Line. I do have it in sport mode. And I wanted to have the camera angled this way just so you could see how the, the driver setup is organized. Well within reach to get to that 10.25 inch infotainment system screen. Visibility out the front is great. Out the back is phenomenal. You got all the Kia drive-wise safety features. The one thing I'm noticing right away is that when you have it in sport mode, it's pretty like snappy, a little too over the top. And I don't know if I want aggressive tuning like that, especially in a front wheel drive car, because it's so easy, even with 180 horsepower, to break traction with the front wheels. So not really digging the sport mode. I think it's a little too touchy, but steering feel is great. And the seats are probably my one of my favorite things about the interior. Not only the color, but they're very comfortable and they're very supportive. Gauges, even though it's not full digital instrumentation, still look super clean, even with the uh, backlit LED gauges. And you got plenty of storage room in here. I mean, not only underneath the armrest, but up front. And you have the connectivity to boot. But let's go on throttle in sport mode so I can show you how touchy things are. On throttle, here we go. See, right now we're breaking traction. Breaking traction. So, kind of interesting how aggressive they have the tuning on that. But the great news is, is that the eight-speed automatic shifts really really nicely so that's the good news about everything is that that eight speed automatic it's better than the cvt in the toyota camry four cylinder camry now if you go v6 camry you do get a eight speed automatic in that but driving down the road here very comfortable very composed i think in some ways it's starting to show its age they need to refresh the Kia K5 and I'm sure that's probably going to be happening sooner rather than later but uh, still at this price point $29,000 not a lot of vehicles period that are available at that price point but the steering wheel feels great especially in the GT line you get the flat bottom steering wheel AC controls are easy to figure out especially with the dual climate control I like having that that there, especially, you know, you have that person next to you that wants a temperature a certain way, you could have it your way, just like Burger King. Heck, you could drive them to Burger King, having it your way, and then have it your way at Burger King. But, uh, like I said, I think the vehicle overall, chassis-wise, feels very buttoned down. Uh, it just comes down to ultimate reliability in the end, and I think that's where Toyota still comes out on top. Brakes feel good. We're going to go on throttle again. On oh, throttle, here we go. A little bit better that time, getting the traction to the ground. 
the four cylinder, you know, makes typical four cylinder sounds, but it's not too much vibration, which I'm happy to hear. And I think it kind of just helps with the old, the overall driving experience. But you got your lane keep assist, your blind spot monitoring, and uh, just really overall a well driving car. All right guys, we're gonna pull out on the highway. The best thing about driving this car is that it's easy to drive. Um, I think it feels more connected through the steering wheel than the Camry. So that's something that I've, I've uh, experienced in many of these K5s is that they feel a little bit more connected. Like you know what the front wheels are doing and how much traction and how much grip you have coming through the wheel. It definitely is sportier than a Camry. It, it, it has that sporty feel, sporty style over a Camry. So it just really depends on what kind of driving experience you want ultimately at the end of the day. You do have emergency brake assist, which is nice. That little chime you hear is the lane keep assist. So it's nice for me to kind of show off all the safety features because I think that's the thing that uh, Kia really is knocking it out of the park. That standard, you're getting so many safety features. It's ridiculous. But driving down the highway, it's smooth. The ride is not harsh. It's a little stiffer than a Camry, but, but not by much. And other than that, everything is well sorted in here. But uh, we're going to get back to Loki Kia and wrap this one up. Hopefully, this has been a good overall review of the K5 GT line. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, been another great day here at Loki Kia. Definitely want to thank Robert, Danny, and the rest of the team getting us access to this 2024 Wolf Gray K5 GT line. Let me know what you think. Are you going K5 or are you going to go with the tried and true Camry? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. We need to give it up, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He actually saved a cat from this tree behind me. One of the people that lived down the street, their cat got loose, got up the tree. Stephen was there, put the camera down, and rescued the cat. So show him some love to our hero, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next road.